All right, I'm going to do it. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to switch over to the Gearbox stuff here where they're currently covering uh, Borderlands stuff, I believe. Uh, Borderlands movie. Frontier of this, and we think Borderlands is the perfect video game, and and you and, and you were really flattering. And and how how was I to you? I was kind of a it's kind of a jerk, wasn't I? You made us work for it. <laughs> you made us work for it. But you were right. You were right. We're, you have to understand, like we get hit up from Hollywood people all the time, and it's a different world. Like what we have to do to make video games is a completely different skill set than what you care about in making these incredible films. And I, I didn't want, I wanted to make sure that if we were going to partner with somebody on the film side, that it was, it was with people that, that cared about our universe, cared about our fans, uh, and cared about the character and the worlds that we created, and was going to actually develop it. Not just, you know, a lot of these guys will collect options and just throw it in studios, just see where they can get business done. And you, I mean, I, I, I probably beat you up for like two years plus. Oh yeah. yeah, we called it dating for two years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excuse me. I remember. You remember <laughs> we were dating for years. Yes, and uh, but we, we we did a deal, and that and it's been a long road. Yeah, but, but you know what? Here. We're here, and we're psyched, and it's really it's been worth it. You know, like feels like we used that time pretty well. I can't I can't believe it. You um, know, and we're really proud of where we're at. It's uh, and, uh, it's it's pretty amazing. So we're about we're more than halfway done with, oh, the, yeah. with the shooting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're uh, we're about two thirds of the way done. Oh, look at this. Right. We, got, we, got Eli again. we have a really funny shot. Oh yeah. With the yeah. trash. We should be shooting it behind the scenes. I I, I, I was told that we. Well, can't I don't think really... we can give it away, but I think that for him, anyways, for our behind the scenes, we should get it. Oh 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 oh. So um, I'll tell you what, you guys. Um, this is Eli. This is Ari. Oh, don't look that way. You can't. No, no, this way. Look this. Way. <laughs> don't, don't look that way. Please stand by. We can't show. Yes, yes. I don't want to. Okay, so guys, uh, it's going to be an amazing E3. Um, uh, Borderlands, the film, is going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, uh, we've got some cool stuff to show you. I, I know some of you are interested in seeing more about the uh, the new game that we that we have announced and uh, and learning more from Gearbox Publishing. So you're going to get all that. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but since we're digital, we're going to do it this way. Uh, thank you, guys, and <laughs> I'll catch you later. Cheers. So that's where that, okay. Among I thought the Discord did a thing. Courses <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gearbox University. Make sure you check out Borderlands Science. By solving the puzzles, you can contribute to real world research studying the human gut microbiome. For you freshmen in the audience, here's our leading scientist, Maya. Mayer. I don't know what to trust. By playing Borderlands After Devolver. 3, you yeah, can right? contribute to real world scientific <laughs> research. Is this a parody or? Or? real people. You'll be directly helping our scientists organize and compare this doo doo. I'm the conductor of the poop train! <laughs> With Borderlands Science, okay. you too can be the conductor of the poop train. And while you'll reap in-game rewards when you play, the real reward is knowing that you're making the world a better place. Gearbox University. We're not even charging tuition for this. <laughs> what? All right. Well, there you go. Here we go. I mean, if Trump can have one. The Homeworld game started in the mid '90s. Ooh, Homeworld the remastered. First ever yeah. truly 3D okay. RTS. That's exciting. So that was a big deal in, you know, the late 90s. Mm. Homeworld 3. Fate. See, we saw this, right? Saw that shot. Sores on the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. It rises from the grave. It stocks the ocean floor. Makes sense, they have You cannot hide one trailer. Fate. But you can make your own. They might show some other stuff too. I mean, IG and Expo had a little bit more on it as well, so. Okay. No! 
<laughs> Feels like spin-offs, movies, Borderlands just getting bigger and bigger as it goes along. What stallion? What if it was actually turn-based? You would love it. <laughs> Probably would. Uh, quick question. We're not talking about yet, right? That is correct. Oh, it's my favorite. Hi, <laughs> I'm Kayla Wilmore, and I'm senior producer on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So what's really unique about Wonderlands is it's a uh, looter shooter, which is you know pretty classic for Gearbox software, but for the first time ever, we're setting it in a brand new fantasy environment. Even though it's inspired by some of uh, the content we've made before with Assault on Dragon's Keep, a fan favorite. Roll for initiative, suckers! It's a completely standalone plot, new set of characters with some nods to the past, but if you've never played a Borderlands game before, you can absolutely jump right in and enjoy it just as much. I think it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely excited to talk about Wonder, all of our new enemy types. Like is it full uh, so priced? That is How one long of is our it? Wyvern enemies, you will absolutely be fighting them. They're not your average wyvern. So of course we've got goblins. You definitely can't have a fantasy game without goblins, but again, we like to make them our own. Thank you so much everybody. I hope that you are as stoked as we are about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Follow us on our social channels to find out the latest and greatest news. Enjoy the rest of the show. This franchise has been around for so long. Yes. Two thousand three, huh? Here we are years later. It's been later, a while. And we keep looking at like, well, Homeworld three. This has to happen. Ooh. Okay. That's big the news for a lot of people. And you have been chosen by the gods to protect this realm. Okay, this is that game too. But uh, your first task is to find some new clothes that aren't desert. Uh, the Viking game? Drafty. Yeah, yeah. it's a Viking game. Your tribe's journey starts in the wilderness. Uh, yeah, it was like down pets, Midgar something. Rare resources, and explore the untamed world. Find some clothes. Once you've plundered all you can carry, return to your village and use those resources to forge Viking-worthy gear. You must protect the seed of Yggdrasil at all costs, Tried or this world hard. and Sounds everything right. in it will be destroyed forever. So take heed. The helpings rise when the sun sets. Destroy these dark spirits before they destroy the seed. Each victorious night makes way for a new day to venture into new lands, build to greater heights, and face fiercer creatures. And with great risk comes great rewards. But be careful. You're of little use to Midgard squashed by a troll. Craft legendary weapons, build deadly defenses, and grow the strength of your tribe, because those giants are on their way. It's time for us to end their path of destruction. Let's show them our might is greater than their height. As the saying goes, Valhalla can wait. July 27th. Hmm. Hello everyone, and my name is Ren Maroda. I'm the creative director at Norsefell. We're just on the two months away from pop air. finally launching mm -hmm, our does. upcoming 10-player co-op action RPG, mm -hmm. Tribes of Midgard, and deliver it to you on July 27th on PS5, PS4, and Steam. In Tribes of Midgard, you play as an Ainoyar, a glorious Viking hero that's been returned to Midgard in order to protect the seed of Yggdrasil, the world tree. Every time you start a new run, you would want to go out and explore this new world, gather some resources, fight enemies, and return to your village in order to craft better equipment and tools to help you survive. You can also upgrade and fortify your village, because each night, creatures from hell will emerge from the depth to attack your tree. 
Make it through the night to go back out to raid enemy camps. Or that sounds like caves. Take part each in night events, creatures from hell. Own quests, yeah. build anywhere, and of course, loot countless items to gain experience and level up your Viking. We now have eight classes in the game, each with mm. their own abilities, eight. specificities, and playstyle. Cool. As you gain experience, you level up to unlock even more skills. Like his Norse moon shirt, that he's got going for all yeah. the top results. Whoa, it's pretty cool. But those mighty creatures do a aren't even on. your biggest threat. <laughs> <laughs> you must get ready and prepare for your biggest challenge, and I mean biggest challenge to date. Every couple of days, a giant will emerge and walk towards your village with the intent of destroying the seed of the Brazil. Oh. You must stop Damn, it we need and to take move. it down, whatever the cost. <laughs> Otherwise, it's you game have to over. defend the tree. You can of course play tribes of Midgard completely on your own, but we highly recommend that you bring along nine friends to thrive together. We cannot wait to share more information about this ever-growing epic saga in the weeks to come. In the meantime, you can already pre-order the game right now to earn exclusive items and be among the first to defend Midgard against Ragnarok. Because as they say, Valhalla can wait. I've heard, for I've heard that. Have you heard that? Indeed. I, I don't know where I heard that. University, it's not all textbooks and calculators. Sometimes we like to kick back and have a little fun. A good sense of humor is of vital importance if you want to succeed in these halls. Here's a list of sensible wisecracks you might hear when you're exploring our campus. Why did the tribe of Midgard cross the road? To get to the Othor side. Knock, knock. Oh. Who is there? The commander. Here we go, Aaron. It's for you. The commando who? I don't know. What are you axing me for? Welcome to the Homeworld Diner. Our special today is the dessert of Carrot. Help, I've got fallen and I can't get up. Claptrap, Tiny Tina, and Mad Moxie walk into a bar. Wait, I think Moxie owns the bar, so why would she be walking in? She'd already be there. And is Tiny Tina old enough to drink? Maybe it doesn't matter in space. Does it meet your approval, Aaron? the punchline. And how is Claptrap walking in? I want to say he counts as a unicycle. Okay, we'll work on this no. before we submit to E3. Yes. Gearbox University. Wish Our I could zoom in It's beyond my power. Degree. Our comedy school is a two-year degree. <laughs> I like that. I like the old school 80s looking. It really should have went before Devolver. <laughs> <laughs> the war is over. Yes, Godfall. But our fight has just begun. This five upgrade. <laughs> our duty is to carry the burden oh, cool. of war. Or just savor the victory. What fun is death? When death is the end of our fun! <laughs> the darkness has breached reality. It is time, my champion. This is going to end. Time for your madness to end, brother. Interesting sword. I was never just your brother. I am your god. And after all your promises, you've ripped it. August 10th. That was for Greetings, what everyone. version of it? The My name PS4. Is the new stuff. I'm the senior technical producer at Counterplay Games. First and foremost, on behalf of everyone at CPG and Gearbox alike, I want to thank you for being part of Godfall's journey up until this point. It's crazy to think that Godfall just launched in November of last year. Our developers have been hard at work ever since. 
In fact, this past February, we launched the massive Primal update, which included new content such as additional rooms in Tower of Trials, Primal gear, Ascension levels, and much, much more. But I'm excited to announce today that on August 10th, we will be launching Godfall on the PlayStation 4. Not only that, but owning Godfall on the PS4 entitles you to a free PS5 upgrade, and we will support cross-gen play so PS4 and PS5 users can seamlessly co-op together. And if you've hmm. been struggling in the Ascended Tower of Trials, don't worry, we're adding matchmaking. But really, matchmaking and the PS4 edition are just the tip of the iceberg because we are so excited to launch our first ever expansion, which we've entitled Fire and Darkness. Fire and Darkness will take players into the Fire Realm for the first time ever, where they'll be met with new challenges, enemies, bosses, trophies, cosmetics, and so, so much more. But alongside Fire and Darkness, we're also releasing a free content update, which we're calling the Lightbringer Update. The main component of the Lightbringer Update is a new endgame loop, which we're calling Lightbringer. In Lightbringer, players will fight off the darkness that threatens Aperion and be rewarded with a new loot type, Cursed Loot. Cursed loot will challenge the player to complete particular objectives in order to lift the curse and awaken them. I think he has Basically, our microphone. Basically, if you thought Primal Gear was tough, yep. you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and then, of course, we want to make fashion the forefront of Godfall. So we have added a the huge forefront. library of cosmetics fashion to both souls. the Lightbringer update and the expansion alike, all of which can be unlocked by simply completing objectives in the game. Thank you so much for your time today. It is an honor to be speaking here, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your E3. There's a really unique tone and vibe and feel to Homeworld that hasn't been emulated since. I wonder why they keep doing like Homeworld and then back to the uh, stuff and then a little bit of Homeworld and back to the stuff. It's not a remaster. It is Homeworld no. 3. It is the next Homeworld. It does seem strange. It doesn't usually give much more. You know, oh, yeah. it's, like, it's like we're glad you've chosen like TV commercials cutting in. for your higher education yeah, a little endeavors. Bit. As you engage in your academic pursuits, don't forget to try out our extracurricular activities. Show off your shutterbug talents in the photography club. Make lasting connections in our chapter houses. Or if you're a boring person, you can always try out for the debate team. We also have sporting events, but try not to party too hard at the homecoming game. <laughs> Where did he go? It's low gravity. <laughs> That's Eric playing Valhalla. Be sure to follow us on social media, where you'll occasionally find free shit. Also, follow Blind Wave on social media. Announcements about our latest yeah. scholastic offerings. Gearbox University. We can shape your future, because thinking for yourself is hard. <laughs> now, go buy all our games. We're back. I hope you guys had an awesome presentation from all the Gearbox games in development and Gearbox publishing products coming. Uh, listen, uh, I'm standing outside Kevin Hart's trailer door. I'm just gonna. You guys want to meet him? I think. I think. I think he wants to meet you guys. I'm gonna, let's see. Let's see if he opens. Hey, Kevin, you got a minute? Uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, Borderlands oh fans, <laughs> meet Kevin Hart. How you guys doing, man? Pretty pumped up right now to meet you guys. Uh, Randy, you should tell him actually how big I am in person. <laughs> so, so great well, I'm 6'3". <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can get a good grasp of how much height I put on for this role. <laughs> Dude, you're freaking awesome. Like, I don't, like, you don't, you don't understand. Like, you're a freaking action hero. Thank like, you, man. This is, this is amazing watching you work. You know like, what? You're blowing my mind. I'm going to say uh, I'll one-up you. I'll say... It's amazing for me to have the opportunity to portray the character of Roland, of course, who you're very familiar with, because this is your creation. Um, I think the biggest and best the thing soldier. is the surprise that you guys are going to be in for. Because you got no idea what I'm doing or how I'm doing or why I'm doing it. You got no idea the level that I came in at. You got no Roland idea was playable in the first one, right? Preparation I decided to put into yeah, he's the this game. particular character yeah. in this role. You got no idea. You got no idea. You don't even know what's under this jacket. <laughs> it's metal. You got no idea 
My job is to come in, not only be prepared, but to shock. And I think right now this is what we're doing. We are doing it. I've seen some, I've seen some pretty, like- It's, it's intense. It's, no one's ever seen you like this before. No, I can honestly say, man, Eli is doing such a phenomenal job. He's, he's doing, he's, wreck, he's it's also fun, fun to work with him. such a he's puffy working jacket. His ass off. Oh, everyone's working their ass off. Absolutely. You got an amazing cast, um, uh, Kate, Jamie, uh, Ariana, myself, Flo, our director, Eli, Jack Black, you put an amazing group of people together. So, shout out to you, your team at Gearbox. Shout out to Lionsgate, you know, for seeing that this is something that could be phenomenal. Shouts out to uh, to the world of Pandora, Pandora Knowers. To have played Borderlands at least <laughs> once. You guys that know and love this world, I promise you, you're going to be in complete Can they use awe. that sound? You see how the more you know. Made it become. That was an NBC uh, thing. Visual, Maybe. You know, Copyright. You believe that you're in this place with me, so. <laughs> wow, you're and it goes right. down. <laughs> dope, My eyes are well enough. No, 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 hey, thank dope. you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. you taking a minute to uh, introduce yourself to, question. to our fans. No problem. We're going back in here in the right. room. I'll see you later. I got a weight room in here. This rolling lifts weights in between takes. You'll know why later. <laughs> Take it easy, Kevin. Things got a spiral man. staircase. Holy crap, you guys. This is. I can't wait for you to see this movie. It won't be long, but we still got a lot of work to do. We're a little bit more than halfway Get the camera in your gut. <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? Back at home at Gearbox, all the great people that created this universe that I'm here representing on behalf of all the talent at Gearbox, uh, we're hard at work making I really stuff. have no so, idea uh, what Borderlands is. And I'll see you guys soon. We Cheers, played it. Everybody. We did. For those of you, who've never seen you shoot things so that you can get better guns to shoot more things. Gotcha. Like There's a story. Myself. It's got some funny characters. And a story. The cell shading graphics are pretty cool. Oh yeah, didn't we do like vehicle stuff or something like that? Yep. Yeah. 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 We played it at the last E3 we went to. And on Or Lance 3. And on stream. I think we still have the masks around here somewhere for the Psycho. Was that was that Penn and, and Teller? Yeah. yeah, it's that VR game I was telling you about. Oh, okay. Uh, that makes more sense. <laughs> you guys thought there was going to be Borderlands or something? Yeah, it's like I really miss Borderlands and Penn and Teller in it. <laughs> uh, is that it? That's it for uh, hmm. for Gearbox. Alrighty. All right, okay. so there we had Gearbox and we have Devolver Digital that we both covered or got to see a little bit of. Um, they what, were in Borderlands. <laughs> I've been in Teller, apparently. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That was real. Gotcha. Well, there you go. I guess we didn't get no. that far, huh? Hmm. We did not. We did not. Actually, when we were getting some different things, whatever, early today, I was like, you know, we should play Borderlands 3 on stream again. Yeah. We yeah. never really played much of that. I feel like we, we played, played it once, right? I think we played it once, maybe twice, but it was one gotcha. of those where it was like, we should play this again. So, um, no, I mean, I saw a lot of people being like, man, Devolver should have gone after them. They should have had these guys go first. <laughs> I don't know if Devolver was actually part of E3 because they weren't on E3's schedule line at all for uh, presentation-wise. This this E3 has been very weird. Haphazard. Weird. Yeah, and it's been hard to kind of get an idea of what all is happening where and when mm -hmm. it's happening and – if, if we're allowed to cover it, <laughs> I don't know. There's been so much stuff yeah. going on, yeah. different things with that too. Where it's are like, we gonna be able to actually hear it? Yeah, like where I don't know what all we have. Uh, yeah, but no. Um, this one here was Gearbox. This one was part of it. This was after Ubis Ubisoft on E3 was scheduled to have Ubisoft and then like a post show for Ubisoft, and then going into Gearbox. Um, and uh, with that, I I don't I don't know that they I don't think they showed us anything that we hadn't seen already either through Games Fest. Or even before that, I mean, they had Godfall here, um, which yeah. some new stuff for Godfall. But it, the weird thing for that for me is that that game came out last year, but now they're releasing it. And as opposed to what normally happens, like with GTA, where there's a new console and they just put it on the new console, this one released originally on PS5 as a launch title. Yeah. And now going is back. going back to the old console. That is interesting. Well, which it's is kind odd. of. What happened accidentally was Cyberpunk, where it came out on the PS4, but then was taken down 
then eventually came back to it once they fixed it enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if they planned the PS4 version all along and like maybe the PS5 version didn't do the sales that they were expecting. And well, so I'm sh- they... I'm, I'm sure it didn't because no one can get a PlayStation 5. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. It hurt their launch numbers for sure. So there's definitely got to be a hard way of getting a... Uh, it's going to be hard if you have a launch title for a game on a console that no one can get. Exactly. So And like by the time you do get it, there might be other things out there that mm-hmm. might be more interesting to you. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, and the, th- the tough thing with that, too, is that like Nintendo maybe can get away with a little bit more because a lot of their big titles that people are looking for that are launch titles are from Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think it's tougher for a another developer to be working on a launch title on something that's hard to find, you know? And I think it's sure. going to be hurting them, but... Um, otherwise, the, I think the only thing... I don't think we've heard that Homeworld 3 was going to be a thing until this, so that might have been yeah. the only real announcement they had. I mean, we missed a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. It seemed like most of what we missed was the film stuff, but there might have mm-hmm. been something in the beginner, in the beginning of it, because... Penn and Teller showed up in the little thing, and I don't remember any Penn and Teller before being anywhere. No. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder how niche Homeworld is. Um, it was a very big game, when the first one that came out. like got a lot of great reviews, but I never got the feeling that it sold super well and was played widely. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who are super excited to have three and the HD remakes of the first two. But I wonder how many people will get into it for the first time, you know, rather sure. than just fans of the series originally. Yeah. I uh, didn't even know it was a thing until they announced the third, you know. I didn't know there was a 3D RTS in the 90s. No, I mean, I'm familiar with, familiar with Homeworld a little bit. Um, I've never played it. Um, I know of it because I've, I've played various RTSs. That's one that's come up when talking about RTSs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely something that may be of interest because I like real-time strategy games. Um, but having never played it, I don't have the nostalgia like I would have. Like, you know, uh, StarCraft Two when that was coming out, a lot of people would have played StarCraft and Brood War and, uh, ooh, a new StarCraft game. I have so much nostalgia for this game. I'm sure there's lots of people yeah. that have that. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I might agree with you, Rick. I don't know if there's a lot for new people coming in because I think RTS is that n- niche kind of game. You know, it's not as big of a... A popular genre. I think it is super smart to do an HD remake of the originals too, um, to, to maybe get people into that. I I wonder because I only played some of the first one. I I wonder how much like story there is. Like, could you just jump straight into three and be fine? I would imagine so. Mm, It'll be yeah. interesting to see. Um, probably similar to uh, what was the other game they were talking about? The uh, Wonderlands game, right? Where, yeah. like, you don't have to play a Borderlands game, but if you do, you're going to get these nods to this and this and this. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like uh, a lot of... There's several Star Wars things where, like, when you watch Star Wars, well, you could probably just watch this and enjoy it, you know? Mm-hmm. But if you know this and that, you're going to enjoy more and get more of these Easter eggs and different things where you're like, oh, my gosh, that's from this or that. Sure. So it may be more, like, along those lines, I, I imagine. Yeah, I really enjoyed the Devolver Digital like conference the most, but I'm curious to see uh, what all we're going to see tomorrow because there's a lot of big names, mm-hmm. big names tomorrow. Sure, there is. Um, tomorrow wise, let me see what all is going to be going on there real quick. Um, tomorrow, what's on E3's broadcast schedule that they're actually covering, um, which, like I said, today didn't have Devolver on it at all. So that's why I'm like a lot of it's been confusing on what's all what all's going on. But they have 24 Entertainment with Naraka Blade Point. They also have Xbox and Bethesda. They have Square Enix. Mm-hmm. They have Warner Brothers with their Back for Blood game. The PC gaming show, which I'm not even quite sure what all that's going to entail. And they also have the Future Game show, which has several different uh, developers and stuff showing different things in that as well. So there's quite a few tomorrow going on. Um, I don't know about Naraka for sure, but we should definitely be good for Xbox, Square Enix, uh, Warner Brothers, and I think the PC and Future. I think everything else we're good on. 
okay. um, in one way or another, for sure. Let's say we'll ask with Xbox tomorrow. Is there anything you're excited to be revealed or talked about? Mm. From Microsoft itself, <clears throat> I don't know if I have anything specifically where I'm like for Microsoft itself. Like the one thing with like Xbox and Microsoft, and the same thing with Sony too. A lot of times they would have things that they were showing. That wasn't from like any of their main stuff. It could be from like a, another developer on a third its own party coming on. It wouldn't necessarily be an exclusive, but it might be, you know, even even Call of Duty sometimes. They would be like, well, Sony got to show the Call of Duty game um, rather than it being from this or that or whatever. Even though Xbox is going to get it too, Sony got to show it. So I'm curious if there's going to be some bigger things. Like maybe, uh, depending on what's going on with like a Star Wars game or anything. That might be shown at like a Microsoft showing rather than another developer. Sure. Sometimes they do that kind of stuff. Uh, depending on how they organize it, sometimes what they'll do is they'll have Microsoft doing the announcement of here's this game that's going to be coming out. Um, but then, say Ubisoft is covering it, usually they would go later and then they'd go a little bit more in depth on that game and stuff too. But considering that some of those have already gone, I don't know necessarily what the plans are going to be for some stuff. The the only actual Microsoft thing that I might be excited about would be the new Age of Empires. Mm, um, okay. But other than that, I think it's mostly on the Bethesda side of things as to like what they might Elder show. Like new Elder Scrolls. New Elder Scrolls, maybe new... Um, th they talked about doing a third DLC for Doom Eternal. Okay. Which I think could be exciting. Yeah, right. definitely, definitely Elder Scrolls 6. Um, probably Halo Infinite. Okay, yeah. For me as well. We saw that little teaser trailer, some gameplay and stuff like that before, but I haven't heard much else other than that. I know. Really looking forward to it. I'm sure Eric's probably most looking forward to the next Forza game. Forza mm -hmm. is right. fun. Yeah. F for F. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, but also what uh, new device will they be able to put Skyrim in? Well, it's already on your fridge. What else do you need it on? Uh, I don't know. Like, you know how they have like those like shirts now that can can play like like images. Oh yeah, you could do Skyrim on a shirt. Basically, like a digital photo frame, yeah. but in your shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could play. I'd see that. You could play Skyrim on your friend. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. Skyrim on your friend. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, guys, if there is some stuff too that you want to make sure we cover or that we don't miss from any uh, showcases or whatnot, uh, maybe put it into our uh, Discord and or Twitter to make sure that we know of times and things for stuff. Because, like I said, a lot of this, like even the E3 portal that we had, which closed down all yeah. morning and trying to get <laughs> some answers of what they're wanting and what they have going on and all kinds of stuff. So there's definitely been a very unorganized... Uh, I don't even know what just happened here. I tried to search in the portal just now, and it just broke. <laughs> it broke. <laughs> you oh, broke boy. It. <laughs> so there's been what a lot of things with that. But I've seen a lot of people talking about different things that are coming and uh, what we're going to be covering and whatnot. And yeah. we're trying to cover as much as we can. Um, there's been lots of warnings on what we can cover and what we can't cover mm -hmm. or what maybe is risky to cover. <laughs> which is mainly due to DMCA stuff and whatnot, which is why mm -hmm. the, especially the Ubisoft one, I didn't notice it in Devolver. Devolver, I like the way they did theirs. It had yeah. a lot of more unique music and it was made for mm -hmm. its own thing. Um, I don't know how you get around that with like Ubisoft and like Just Dance. Sure. You know, but hopefully we won't have so much with that in some future things. Um, this year I feel like I'm back in health class and if they're talking about STDs and risks and... Like certain activities you should and should not engage in. Sure. But for streaming. Yep. <laughs> um, I was trying to see if there was any other questions that we've had submitted or anything. If anyone um got that non fuck withable tape and uh, wants to send that in mailbag, that would be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> we would we would put that in a glass case no. for sure. Devolver's website <laughs> is interesting, Rick. You're right. <laughs> I did go and look at a few things. You can pre-order some shirts, some tank tops. You can, can I... get a premium access business attire suit that that one guy was wearing. 
That's nice. At least it's on the list here, unless it's sold out. No, it's sold out. Blast. I think all of these are sold out. Can but... I get the sleeveless shirt that Aquaman was wearing? Yeah, let me... You can get... No. No, I, I want the one that he wore... I don't think you can. While filming that. <laughs> See, the thing I'm wondering is with Devolver, they have that the tape and they have the suit, but they're both sold out. But I wonder if they had any before, because everything else is available for pre-order. I wonder if they had a version of either of those that actually were able to be sold, or if they've just been sold out since it started. I don't know. Maybe they only had one. I don't know. I'm <laughs> curious. That, that would be very, uh, very interesting. Also, yeah. the fact that Demon Throttle is only available in physical form. Yeah. Is... Caltair said the suit was purchasable. Weird. That's funny. Um, no, yeah, Rick, the uh, only physical box. Like, the one thing, too, is, like, I was between of, like, what if this is actually things that they're, like, is all of it true? Is any of it not true? You know, like, what is going on with this stuff? Because like, like you were saying before, I'm not 100% certain on this app, this, what was it, Tumble Time game. Yeah. By No Popo. That's, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, the reason that I think that the Demon Thrall thing is real is because I've heard of Special Reserve games. And sure. they do make limited editions of uh, physical games, especially Switch games. Yeah. So that makes me think that that one is actually real. So, but no, I like, I mean, the idea of a physical box thing is interesting, never having it digital. I mean, we had Nintendo do theirs before with, like, Mario, right? But they had it where it's a limited time for physical and digital. Yeah. This is just, you can only buy it at a retailer, so. It's been a few people say that they already bought Demon Throttle, and they hope that it's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you, you go, You just people got scammed. Bought, people bought and pre-ordered, and it's not, yeah. it's, it's not real at all. It's all a trick. Um, Your estimated wait time is three minutes uh, when I went there. <laughs> All right. Well, out of what we've seen today, did you guys have anything that was your favorite thing game-wise or anything? Side-scrollers aren't normally my thing, but the uh, the trip to Yomi. Yeah. That looked uh, really cool. Trek, trek to Yomi. Yeah. Trek. Trek to Yomi. Um. Wasn't super excited by much else. Okay. I do like the, the Demon Throttle. Like, I didn't play very many older console games or anything like that, like Bullet Hells or anything. I just didn't have access to them. But something like that that's that's made to be, like, retro, mm -hmm. I would probably enjoy. Uh, what yeah. about you, Eric? Did you see anything that you thought was... I mean... I think that the thing that I've seen I mean, today was probably the same thing that I liked the most last time, which was that Phantom Abyss game. Phantom Abyss? Yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. They can sink some hours into that game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, Devolver just had a, a really, really charming, fun way of doing things, which I never want to miss now. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, honestly, I feel like almost all of their games look very, very, very interesting. Sure. Unique, so, different. Yeah. Um, so the thing now is like, what happens the next time they have a presentation? Mm -hmm. uh, does that, you know, or uh, can they live up to it again? You know? Yeah, or yeah. How many? Do they do yeah. that same thing well, again? Do they do something different next time? Like you can, you, know, you can only eat so many chili cheese dogs. To be know? fair, last year they did make an entire video game for their conference. <laughs> did they? Yeah, it's a thing I was telling you on Steam before. Remember? I don't remember. It was oh, right before the stream. The, yeah, where the um. The whole thing was like mysteriously canceled, and you can go around and explore the the booth. Oh, and that one there. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, Apparently on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember any of that from before, so I don't think we ever checked it out. But I mean, at least it's unique and different way of uh, showing everything. Mm -hmm. Sure. Someone said that game isn't even that bad, <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, Rick, me, did you have was... anything of your favorites from uh, from what we've seen today? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I was excited for today. Uh, like Calvin, Trek to Yomi, I think looks pretty awesome. 2D Kurosawa style thing. Yeah. It'd be very cool. Uh, like Eric, Phantom Abyss is something that I think could be fun as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems sort of like a mix between a Spelunky and a Trackmania almost. 
it's like one of those games that you have to get good at with practice like to be ready for anything well yeah uh, you have to have that adaptability depending on the situation yeah rather than just rote memorization or something mm -hmm. uh, we saw death door before but still excited for that inscription mm -hmm. is the one that maybe i'm the most excited for just because uh daniel mullins makes such crazy games and this seems like a step above of anything that he's made before okay. so super excited for that um and then i think the last one really is i'm also excited for the mario and rabbit spark of hope because i really enjoyed that first game sure um i mean from what we saw like far cry 6 i'm definitely more interested in than any far cry game i think i've seen before um yes rainbow six extraction i i like i love the pv P aspect of Rainbow Six Siege, but I'm always looking for fun mm. PVE co-op aspects to be able to do with uh, friends and stuff. And that one has my interest just because I also have a I have nostalgia from when I used to play Rainbow Six Siege. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, Devolver Digital, uh, Death's Door definitely has my interest. I agree. Phantom Abyss also looks a lot like a lot of fun. Um, and Demon Throttle also looks like a game that I would have played back in the day on like. I don't know, an old console where mm -hmm. <laughs> the 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 words are muffled and like covered up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that demon kissed my wife or something. <laughs> you know, or, like I, I love that something. and the way they did that and the aspect, like how it looks old and everything was really cool. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, everything I saw from Gearbox, I mean, nothing from that really caught me a whole lot, uh, or anything that I didn't know about already. So. Uh, I think my uh, I think those are probably my favorite things that I saw so far. Uh, I'm looking forward a lot to tomorrow because Square Enix and Xbox are uh, are t two companies that usually make some games that I'm very interested in. So I'm excited to see what they do and what they have to announce, um, as well as Back for Blood. Back for yeah, Blood, I, sure I really is. enjoyed Left for Dead. I think that's part of why I also am interested in like this uh, extraction game, Rainbow Six. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited to see what they do with uh, Back for Blood. So what time are we coming back tomorrow? Um, well, tomorrow we are going to be having uh, we're going to be having the Xbox and Bethesda showcase starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We'll probably mm -hmm. be starting before that. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to cover Naraka Blade Point, um, but that's only going for about 30 minutes. There is supposed to be some VR stuff going on tonight. We may talk and look into that during our pre-show tomorrow. Gotcha. Um, so we'll probably be starting... See, I don't know what all they're going to have there. We might be starting roughly around noon mm -hmm. of making sure that we have time for covering anything that's popped up, anything that we haven't seen or missed or whatever from E3 otherwise, and making sure that we're good for Xbox and Bethesda um, showcase. And then most of the most tomorrow is going to be just going from Xbox to Square Enix to Warner Brothers to the PC to the future. Like We should be covering, I think, pretty much all that stuff on the way through. Um, we might cover Naraka as well, depending on how things roll with that. So I would imagine about 12 o'clock is when we'll be starting our, our pre-talk about anything that we've missed uh, overnight 